me. It's a bit of adventure I want now. We'll get them all heated up and then drop them cold. It'll be good practice for married life. <laughs> now, come into the workroom. I know some ways we can perk up our appearances. Besides, a bit of a wait will make them nervous and easier for us to tease them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so, I'll try to make it easier to find me in the stillness of July, because a breeze might stir a rainbow behind me. That might happen to catch a gentleman's eye. Oh, many. We'll get an adventure out of this yet. We'll get an adventure out of this yet, Barnaby. All day long, we wander around in New York and nothing happens. We come to the quietest street in the city and suddenly we just... Elder. Is he still out there? Go look! Oh, he's sitting right on that bench! And Cornelius... Are you sure this is an adventure? You don't have to ask, Barnaby. When you're in one, you'll know it all right. How much money have you got left? Oh, not much. Uh, well, 40 cents for the train back, 30 cents for dinner, and then... Oh, there's 20 cents to see the whale. Uh, 90 cents, why? When those ladies come back, we'll have to pretend to be... Customers! Customers, that's it! Maybe the best thing for us to do is make them think we're rich. That way we won't have to spend anything at all. We're just two men about town looking for some hats for ladies. Oh, good afternoon. Smolloy. Here, Cornelius Hackle. Uh, uh, here, Barnaby Tucker. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Now, what can I do for you? Oh, oh well, you we're just two ladies, ladies about, about town, town looking for some, some hats for Malloy. What? We want a hat. For a lady, of course. And everyone said go to Mrs. Malloy's because she's so pretty. I mean, her hats are so I pretty. Mean, so reasonable, Cornelius. <laughs> as reasonable as under a dollar will leave us enough to see the whale. You don't have to pay him. No, my man. He's come all the way from Yonkers to see the stuffed whale, and he's all, well, excited. Now, why don't you go wait by the window, and maybe you'll see it pass by? Is it big and black with mean little red eyes? Yes! It's sitting right on that bench! <laughs> Did you say Yonkers, Mr. Hackle? Oh, yes, ma'am, Yonkers. Forgive me for saying this, but you should really see Yonkers. By that, I mean perhaps uh, a Mr. Malloy would like to see Yonkers as well. Oh, I'm a widow, Mr. Hackle. You are? Barnaby, she's a widow! <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Well, I'm sure Mr. Malloy would have enjoyed Yonkers, especially in that hat. I mean, not you, of course, not I'm Mr. Malloy, may he rest in peace! You're Catholic, aren't you? Well, don't let that bother you. I'd be more than willing to change if you're willing to change. <laughs> should ever happen to have an evening free in the near future, I'd be more than willing to show you Yonkers from top to bottom. Well, maybe they're sooner than you think, Mr. Hackle. Oh, really? You see, I have a friend who lives in Yonkers. Do you? Perhaps you know him? Perhaps we do. Although I know it's always silly to ask in cases oh, like this. It's a uh, Mr. Vandergelder. Of course, Vandergelder! Uh, uh, Vandergelder's hay and feed. Yes, do you know him? No, 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 no. Mr. Vandergelder is well respected and highly liked, they tell me. Oh, he's a lovely man, Mrs. Malloy, just lovely. Has only one fault as far as I know, he's hard as nails. <laughs> Cornelius, I think he's... Now, I wonder if your friend might like this one. Uh, begging your pardon, oh, Mrs. Malloy. Look Gentlemen, what are you doing? Help us, Mrs. Malloy, we'll explain everything later. Come out no, of there this no, minute. Oh, he is. We're really as innocent as can be, Mrs. Malloy. Mr. Hackle? Mr. Tucker? I insist you come out of there this minute, or I will be forced. What are you doing? What? Come out of there this minute. Mrs. Malloy! Mr. Mrs. Levi isn't in here, is she? She was supposed to meet me out there on that bench ten minutes ago. Well, when she comes, she can just go looking for me. Because when I make an appointment, I expect people to be on time. Here, for you, chocolate covered peanuts and shell. Very expensive. Kind. <laughs> Did I say you're talking to men in here? Men? Men, Mr. Vandervelder? 
What would men be doing in a lady's hat shop now? Come with me to my workroom. I'm anxious to show it to you. I seen it last week. So you did. Well, Mr. Vandergelder, how's the hand feed business? I hear you have three friends. All hard as nails. I mean, what on earth are you talking about? Yonkers, Mr. Vandergelder. And who's been telling you about Yonkers, Mads? Nobody. A, a friend. A friend. Well, you see, he. He. A customer, Mr. Vandergelder. Someone quite well to do, as a matter of fact. He was in here buying hats for ladies. Now, perhaps you may know him, although I know it's always silly to ask for cases like this. It's, uh, Cornelius Hackle? Did you say Hackle? Yes. He happens to be my head clerk, that is all. Mrs. Malloy, I demand an explanation. And for I'm going to give it to you. Why shouldn't she know Cornelius Hackle? Everybody in New York knows Cornelius Hackle. Why, he's here at the opera and in all the fashionable homes. Why, he even goes to the Harmonia Gardens restaurant three times a week. Impossible. He only has $146.35, oh. and I keep that in my own safe. Mr. Vandegelder, you're killing me. He's one of the hackles. They built the canal. <laughs> what canal? The, the canal. Canal. Both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it ain't the same man. Who pulled the horses off of Jenny Lynn's carriage and pulled her through the streets? Cornelius Hackle. Who dressed up as a waiter at the Fifth Avenue Hotel and dumped an oyster down Miss Astor's? <laughs> well, I can't even say it, but it was Cornelius. He is the playboy of New York. Now, Irene, my dear, don't deny it. I can see you were taken with him just like everybody else. Dolly, what are you saying? I've only seen him once in my don't entire life. Dolly. Oh, excuse me. Of course. Of course. I'm sure you can make short work of any man. <gasps> oh, those muscles. Oh, I can feel them now rippling back and forth under your coat. Ripple, ripple, ripple. Oh, 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 time, Mrs. Levi, stand aside. Stand indeed, Mr. Vandegelder. That is exactly what the court will want to know when you're accused of entering this closet without a search warrant. <laughs> I mean, what do you stand for if not for the law of this great land? I know what I stand for. I stand for motherhood, America, and a hot lunch for orphans. Take off your hat, sir. Betsy Ross's flag is passing. Will you see him on the head of Gettysburg? Meet that great triumphal arch. If you see him, he's been trembling through the great soft wrath. Stand up and march, march, march. Did you, sir? Oh my goodness, the room is crawling with men! Ah! I'll never get over it! 
Oh. I take it I'll see you this afternoon, Mr. Vandekilder. You certainly will, Mrs. Levi. But a certain young lady at the main floor of the parade. Good day, Mrs. Moy. Mrs. Malloy, I can explain everything. You see, we just wanted one more oh, semester, that's all the that patience. Just you and Mr. Tucker do me the favor of leaving my shop, or I will have to send for officer. Oh, now, Irene, oh. my dear, I wouldn't do that. Calling an officer is letting them off far too easy. The law courts, that's where they belong. Now, I've been adding up the legal offenses that these two have committed, and believe me, you've got grounds for at least. Two writs? No. Yes. A non compass mentis and a garnishé. Now, the thing to do is show that you tried to settle it amicably first, so have dinner with them. Dinner? Dolly, is that absolutely necessary? It's the way things are done in the law. I mean, dinner first, garnishé afterwards. <laughs> well, if it must be, Mr. Hackle, Mr. Tucker. You may have the pleasure of taking Miss Faye and myself out to dinner. Oh, we meet the line is that I did speak for Barnaby, too. Now I hear there's a very nice restaurant in the railroad station that's plenty of those Oh, no, if the Harmonia Gardens is good enough for your fashionable friends, then it's good enough for us. I hear they have a lovely orchestra, mini. Oh, we couldn't do that, Mrs. Malloy! Now, it's not about the money or anything. It's just that it's just about the whale! It's the whale! It's the whale. It's the whale. No, it's not the whale, Barnaby! It's... It's the dancing. You see, they have dancing in a place like that. Exhibitions, even contests, and it would take me weeks, or even months, or years to learn. 33-year-old chief clerks taught how to dance. Now, it's very simple. <laughs> you just put one arm here and It's one no arm use. I have absolutely no sense of rhythm. Absolutely no sense of rhythm is the primary requirement for learning the Gallagher-Levi method. Just give me five minutes of your time, Mr. Hackle. I'll have you dancing in the streets. Good. We'll start with lesson seven, the waltz kick turn. It's very simple. Turn. Right foot touch, left foot touch, under, back, around, touch. Good. And back, through, around, and behind, and out, over, release, unfurl. That's wonderful! When I think of all the lucky women who will find heaven in your arms. Now, let's go back to lesson one. Put your hand on her waist and stand, good, with her right in your left hand. And one, two, three, not so close, folks. One, two, three, now try. One, two, three. Look! <laughs> well, I was. Of course you were, Mr. Take the sun.
and you know I got some aches in my back and pains in my sides and some stabs in my liver. I'm fine. <laughs> you know, my daughter Fanny just got married. Did she? Yes, last year, last September. <sighs> it's been such a long time since you've been here, Mrs. Levi. Such a very long time. Eat your vegetables, come on. Let me go. It's been long enough, Ephraim. Every night, for all these years, I've put out the cat. I've locked the door. I've made myself a little rum toddy. Before I went to bed, I said a prayer, thanking God that I was independent that no one else's life was mixed up with mine. And then one night, an oak leaf fell out of my Bible. I placed it there when you asked me to marry you, Ephraim. A perfectly good oak leaf, but without color and without life. And I suddenly realized that I was like that leaf. For years, I have not shed one tear, nor been filled with the wonderful hope that something or other will turn out well. And so I've decided to rejoin the human race. And Ephraim, I want you to give me away. Before the poor passes by, I've got to get in step. While there's still time left, before the poor Enough of just passing by. 
It's money. What have they done to you? It's Levi. What is the meaning of this? Nothing to get upset about, Horace. Just a last minute substitute. Miss Money had a sudden urgent business appointment down at the Mint. They're running short and she's helping out. But she'll meet you tonight at the Harmonia Gardens restaurant at 8 o'clock. That's the most expensive restaurant in the city. And well, it should be. Oh, what food and the fastest waiters in New York. Which, by the way, Horace, I might be a little late tonight. So Miss Money will meet you in front of the restaurant. Wait till you see her all dressed in yellow with baby pink shoes, humming an old-fashioned tune, sweet Rosie O'Grady. You couldn't miss her if you tried. All right, all right, I'll go meet this Miss Money, but only because I already paid for the introduction and I might as well get my money's worth. But from here on out, you are discharged as my marriage broker. Is that clear? You are a woman like anyone else. Where are you taking me? Be still right now. Ephraim, he's as good as mine. <laughs> I'm gonna raise the roof, I'm gonna carry on to be an